What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we started working towards getting a bunch of the IC2 stuff together so we can look at getting into IC2 nuclear. Off camera, I have expanded out our wall. Seems like you guys like the design. So, yeah, I expanded out our wall, brought it all the way down. In fact, I opened up this room even further. Uh, over here where our nether warts are, that was the end of the room right to here. Yep. So I brought it all the way down this way. Like I said, I was kind of expanding the uh, the room down here to the size of our claimed chunks. Yeah, so like uh, that's our village up above that we have claimed. And I was looking on the mini map and it's like, yeah, all right, keep going, keep going, keep going and stop. <laughs> so yeah, all these areas right here are chunk loaded, I think, or maybe they're just claimed. I can't remember if I chunk loaded everything I might have. But anyway, I brought the, uh, the room all the way down this way and I expanded it out this way just a little bit to... Uh, go all the way to our chunk over here as well. Get all that claim stuff in there. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do the whole thing because this room right now is pretty big and this is only about half of the claimed area as you can see on the mini map. So we might expand it just a little bit this way to the east. Maybe a few blocks just to kind of stop it on a chunk border. But I don't think we're going to go much bigger, at least for now anyway. <laughs> I think this is plenty of area to work with. Okay. So yeah, last episode we made all these different machines to start getting our nuclear stuff up and running. And in the comments, people have told me about a mod that's in this pack. I had no idea. It called a converter. So the converters mod looks like we can convert between EU and RF, which is pretty awesome. Now I was looking at these blocks. I haven't gotten a chance to use these at all. I saw that this says low energy 32 EU a tick RF converter. I assume this means this will turn EU into RF. This is medium energy, 128 a tick RF converter. So I guess this turns 128 EU a tick into RF. Anyway, and this is the same thing, high energy 512 to RF. Or RF converter is what it says. And then this says RF energy, 8,000 RF a tick EU converter. I don't know. It doesn't say which way it's going. This could mean that we're going to produce 32 EU a tick off RF, or this could mean that we're going to produce uh, RF off EU. I honestly don't know. Uh, let's start off with the low energy 32 EU a tick RF converter. I, I, I assume this is what we want. <laughs> we're going to try this out. So we have to make one of these copper coil things. I think we might have everything together here, but yeah, this is like the least expensive one. So I kind of want to see how this is going to work and what we're going to do here. Uh, oh, you know what? We need four more of these copper coils. We're going to have enough. Oh, we do have enough copper wires in the system. Nice. I pre-made some before. Guess that was a good thing. All right. So we'll do that, that, and then we need spruce wood and then this LV thingy here. I don't think we have those insulated tin wires. We don't even have any of that tin stuff. All right. So what is that? Uh, so we need tin plate through the metal former. All right. So that is easy enough. Tin and warpy warp up, whoop. warp up here to our metal former, wherever that is. I always get turned around when I warp through the ground like that. It's like, which way am I going? <laughs> Takes me a second to figure it out. All right. So metal former. So we want, yeah, we want to turn that into a plate and then we're going to extrude that plate into the wire and then we'll have to put some rubber on there. So let me do that real quick. So it turns out you extrude the ingot, otherwise you have to use the cutting version of the machine in order to turn a plate into those wires. But anyway, we got that all done. I just rubberized them and there's our LV transformer. And now we should be able to turn that into a low energy 32 EU per tick RF converter. Is this what this is doing? Is this converting RF into EU? Did we get anything on here? It says zero RF on there. So let's attach a wire. Let's see if that fills up with a little bit of power here. Oh yeah. Okay. So this should be producing 32 RF per tick. So let's give that a try. Uh, what's our cheapest machine? Maybe a macerator. Oh yeah. Look at that. And that's powering up. That is awesome. Okay. So that's going to make this way, way, way easier. And I thought that we were going to have to do this. All right. So now we know how those work. So I assume this last one right here converts EU into RF. We can make 8,000 RF per take off EU power. So that's kind of cool. That is a copper EM M red flux induction coil. Oh, I guess I could have figured it out 
Well, no, they're both called... I don't know. Anyway, let's stop messing around with that. Uh, so now that we got uh, EU power figured out, we know how we're going to power all these machines. We should get some better wires to uh, move the EU power around. So if we search for EU slash T, EU attack, we can see all the different types. So the insulated copper cables are good up to 128 EU per tick. I don't know if that's per connection or total power. We might want to just go to the glass fiber cables and just, you know, I, I think that's more than what we need, but we might be making this amount of power, especially when we get the nuclear reactors going. Anyway, uh, it's not super difficult to get to that point. So it's silver plus this energy GM dust, and it gives us six of these cables. And this is four diamonds and five redstone to make nine of those. And we can make a few cables off that, like 18, 24 cables. I don't know. So we need that energy GM dust. So we're going to need to take some of our diamonds, which we're not really using for much at the moment, and convert that down. You know what? Let's do, let's do eight of those. We'll do two recipes worth. Ooh. We should look at getting some of our machines moved to where we're normally at, like our Ender IO machines, because these are the ones that we're going to have to be using a lot. So, oh, we can't put diamonds in there. Is it in... Might have to put in the crusher over there. Let's take a look. What does it cost or what does it take to do this? Actually, additions, mechanism. All right, so the crusher will turn that. Oh, yeah, we can just put diamonds directly into the crusher. That's the actually additions one. Uh, this is from mechanism. I wonder, can we put diamonds into this thing? <laughs> I'm kind of afraid to do it. Oh, we can't jump up there very easily, can we? Uh, you know what? I think what I have to do is use this into the air. Oops, press shift. There we go. Let's try putting one diamond in there. Oh, magnet off. One diamond. Let's do something. Is this the stuff we're looking for? I think it is. All right, so we'll just go ahead and do it this way then. Such a silly way to get up on this machine. I probably should make ladders or stairs or something. All right, well, we'll go and crush these diamonds up this way, and I will make our energy dust. All right, guys, well, taking a break from that real quick, I was over here looking at our witch farm that we set up a couple episodes ago. This thing's working pretty good. I did make some changes to this. I put the vacuum chest underneath the spike, and I put a block of air between the vacuum chest and the spike. I was seeing that there was items getting caught on this plate, trying to run into the spike, and the vacuum chest wasn't able to pull it in. Anyway, I just felt like this was going to be better overall. Now, the only way this might have a problem is if a witch lands directly on top of the spike and just stays there, and then the items drop directly on the spike. The vacuum chest will try and pull straight down, but it's very unlikely that we'll have a witch standing on top of that spike. Anyway, uh, so this is all set up here, but I was just a second ago looking at our chest to see what was in there, and we have more stuff. Than what we've collected here a lot of things that aren't going to go into here and eventually that chest is going to fill up and everything's going to stop working so yeah we've gotten about 500 of the gunpowder about 500 of all of these things to be honest a uh, decent amount of the solidified experience and then you know these other things we're getting various different amounts of the spider how you doing spider you did that spider needs to stop making it sound Anyway, so what we need to do is set up a secondary output for the stuff that are going into these drawers. Some kind of like uh, a place for all the other stuff that doesn't go <laughs> to go. If that makes sense? Anyway, uh, so let's set up a thing here real quick. So I'm just going to put some item conduit here. And we'll put a small storage crate. Yeah, that should be just fine. Let's go ahead and set this up. So we want to set this to insert and we want this to have a lower priority than where our drawer controller is. In fact, we'll just set this to a higher priority too, just to make double sure. So the way that's going to work is his items will try and go in here first, and if they can fit, they'll fit in there. Otherwise, everything else will spill out over into the small storage crate. I think that's going to work just fine for our purposes here. So let's get that connected. Things should start filling in there. Oh yeah, check that out. All right, so we got some run flesh. Ender pearl, some other various things. These salvage parts from these monsters. Yeah, that's going to start eating up a lot of space since most of these are unique and they have their own different durability. Yeah. Anyway, uh, salvage aqua.
aquatic propulsion system swim faster. This is a mod I really should look at some at some point. I haven't gotten a chance to. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so that should solve our problem <laughs> that we had. Very happy. There we go. Yeah, and then all of our extra stuff will go over here. It'll be a while before this thing fills up. But we should keep an eye on this because after a while, this will fill up, and then that chest will fill up, and we'll be in the same position. So we'll have to just keep an eye on that. But for right now, I think we're doing pretty good on that. Okay, so I went ahead and I made uh, 18 energium or energium dust or however you pronounce that stuff. So that is ready to go. We should be able to uh, make our glass fiber. I was just cooking up some glass since we needed that for the recipe. And we were kind of out of glass. <laughs> All right, so now we're back down here. We should be able to do this, 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 this. Oh, you know what? Silver. Oh, we do have silver dust. Perfect. Okay. There we go. So there's 24 of those cables. Like I said, I think that's probably overkill for right now, and we definitely don't need that much of it. But we're just future-proofing, and a little bit later on, we'll probably need that much. So now we can use that cable to take power from our converter. Yeah, and put that into our machine. So now the next step is I need to figure out where we're going to put these machines and start getting power ran over. All right, guys, so I was just kind of rearranging some things here. I moved uh, a lot of our applied energistic system back behind all the way against that back wall over there. Our controllers over here. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we kind of moved some things back there. It doesn't need to be up front. So now we just have our, our crafting terminal right here so we can still access our items. So I was trying to figure out how we're going to get all, everything hooked up here. So I just ended up running a power line all the way over here, which terminates at our EU converter. And I'm not sure if this thing produces more EU per tick, like per face. So I attach the uh, the wires to the different faces here, all going down, and I just attach to the back of these machines like so. Yeah, I'm not really sure how all of this stuff works. Like I said, never really used this mod before, so I'm kind of figuring it out as we go. Uh, so it did fill up all these machines full of power. The thermal centrifuge has a large power reserve, 48,000 EU. I think that's more than everything else combined. Yeah, it is. Uh, so this has a large power supply inside of it. So that took a while to fill up. So while that was filling up, I kind of was looking at our battery over here to see how much power we're using. It, we're using more power than what we're making with that filling up over there. We're drawing about negative 30 RF per tick. So yeah, we lost a little bit of power and that has since refilled. Uh, but anyway, it's not a whole lot of power, but it is enough power just to take note of. So what we want to do is get our uranium into the macerator, get that into our ore washing plant so we can wash it. Then we want that stuff to go through our thermal centrifuge here so we can get the uranium-238 and 235, get that stuff out. Uh, we need to store that somewhere, and then we want to have uh, that auto-crafted into the fuel that goes into the fuel rods, which needs to go into this canning machine here. So this is set to canning. You can kind of see there's some nuclear looking stuff right here and part of a fuel rod. So yeah, we can can food or the nuclear material with the machine set up just like this. Okay, so once we get that done, we need to pull those back out and then we need to store them somewhere. Also, we need a metal former here, which is going to be making our fuel rod stuff. And then we're also going to need another metal former. I just now realized from making the plates. So we might have to snag our other metal former from upstairs and bring it down here specifically for the plate forming. Okay, so we got a lot of applied energistic stuff to do. So getting this all auto crafting is going to take a minute. And then after I ran all this power wire over here, I was thinking, you know, it probably makes sense for us since we're going to need a lot of channels over here to do P2P stuff, right? So P2P allows us to move a lot more channels through a smaller cable since the cables are a little expensive to try and run like a dense cable all the way over here. Uh, and then also I saw with the P2Ps, there are no RF P2Ps in this mod pack, but there is an EU P2P. Right. So we might be able to keep the power all the way back over here, save on these extra cables, and just use that same cable that we're bringing the channels over for the auto crafting to bring the EU over. So I think that's what we're going to end up doing. So I'll probably end up tearing a lot of this down. We'll restring ME glass fiber over here, glass cable, and then we will P2P some channels over here. So that's the next thing I'm going to work on.
All right, guys, so I got some things together here. I made myself a memory card. I got four P2P tunnels. I made some cable anchors, and yeah, we ran our ME glass cable all the way over there in place of our power cable. So let's get this all hooked up so we can move some channels from here all the way over there. All right, so the first thing we need to do is place down some of these ME tunnels. Uh, so what we need to do is grab some of the channels that are on this and then move them over, right? So I think what I'm going to do, let's move our torch right here. Get rid of that. Uh, I need to get myself one ME dense cable. Well, I don't need the dense cable. Actually, I need two of them. <laughs> I don't need the one over here, but we're going to place it here anyway. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to place the ME dense cable right here, right? And then what we need to do is place a P2P on there, like so, and then connect that to our network somehow. In fact, we might connect it right there. I might need to move that. Let's change this up. We'll place this guy right here. I can't place it there because of the torch. Let's move the torch right there then. Okay, so this is getting 32 channels. That's going to go into this P2P tunnel. And then we just need to connect that right back into the controller. Right? So this is connected to the network and this will send these channels wherever we have the output. All right. So now that we got that done, we also need to do the one over here. So we just need to connect that like this. But as you can see, this wire connects to both the P2P and to this one and to this cable. We don't want all of that nonsense. So let's go ahead and break this real quick. We'll place this back and then we'll use our cable anchor right there. And then when we place this cable, it'll connect directly to this one and not to our drives connection. All right. So this is a P2P tunnel dash ME. We want to switch that over to an EU one. So I think we just have to click it with a glass fiber. There we go. Uh, so now it says P2P tunnel dash EU. Now keep in mind the P2P tunnels, uh, even though there's all these ones, you can only make the ME one. All these other ones do not have a recipe. You have to click them with a specific item of that type in order to convert them. Like we just converted this to EU by clicking it with a wire. And we're going to click or convert something to a fluid one. I think you have to click it with a bucket. I'm not 100% sure on there. Item, I'm not, yeah, I don't really know. There's different ways to do this. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's how we convert it to the EU version. All right, so now we have ascending for this and we have ascending for that. Now we need to go all the way back over here and set up the receiving end for these things. Uh, so yeah, the P2P tunnel, we will put right here, ME. Stick that right like this. Notice it doesn't connect. Now if I click it with this glass fiber, that wire connects, right? So now we need to finish the connection process here. You gotta be careful when you're placing those cables. If you shift right click on the tunnel after you convert it to the EU, it might switch back to the ME one. That's why I uh, connected the wire up here. Anyway, uh, so now that we got that connected, we need to grab my staff of traveling. Get over here a little bit faster. So we shift right click on this guy. Uh, copy device. Loaded. Okay, I guess it must have done both. So we've copied the device to the memory card. Now if we come over here and then right click it onto this, it should now connect. It says device missing channel, but it should connect here in just a second. There it is, device online. So as we use power from here, it's going to be using the EU power that's being sent from over there through the ME system. Yeah, I think that should work. We should probably give this a try real quick and make sure everything is working correctly. Uh, so the macerator, let's put some uranium ore through there. We got to do this anyway. So yeah, that is using power. And as you can see, it's drawing the power and then refilling back up. And that's coming through our P2P tunnel. So that's pretty awesome. All right, so now we need to get our ME stuff hooked up. So I'll hook up this one right here. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of the same process. So we come on back over here. We shift right click on this. Copy the device settings. And then we right click it over here. And that'll link that up. So this will provide us 32 channels through this one. 
I might have to change where I have this situated, but that's pretty much the uh, the idea. Now, if we hook up this stuff right here and we connect these all up to whatever our applied energistics is that we're going to be using, like output buses or interfaces or whatever, they'll be pulling the channels through this off the bottom of our controller over there where we have our dense cable connected to on this P2P, right? All right, so that's how that's all hooked up. So the next step is we need to start hooking up the automations for this. So I need to make some export buses, some interfaces, things like that. Uh, so let me get to that and then we will be back. All right, guys, so I've been doing some applied energistics works over here. Got some things laid out. We don't have things completely hooked up yet, but yeah, I want to bring you guys back in so we can finish this up. So underneath our ore washing plant, I have added in another transfer node fluid. Yep, so we have the upgrade mining. So we are pulling water out of the infinite source right here, pulling it into our transfer node, and that's being pushed into our ore washing plant. So yeah, we are constantly full of water here. All right, so that is the only thing that's really hidden that I wanted to show you guys. So yeah, we are going to be exporting from our system uranium ore into our macerator, right? So we saw that happen, that turned into the crushed uranium ore. That's going to be pushed automatically to the north side over this way into our ore washing plant. So that's gonna just transfer directly over here as soon as it crushes it up. So that'll get washed, and then this is the resulting items that we're going to have down here. Purified crushed uranium ore, a couple of piles of, of tiny, a couple tiny piles of lead dust, and then some stone dust. So we don't want all of those items being pushed over into our thermal centrifuge. We only want the purified crushed uranium ore. So we're going to import all that stuff back into the ME system, right? And then we're going to export only the purified stuff once we get a piece. So I'll go ahead and take that out now. So we'll put the purified stuff directly into our thermal centrifuge. Now this thing, we need to get the resulting items into our ME system. Uh, this also is going to be making uh, the refined uranium stuff, which will cause radiation damage if you put this in your inventory. So I don't want to touch any of this stuff right now. Uh, so that is where we're at at this point with the system. So we can start hooking these things up and getting things going. Uh, just let me grab some of this glass cable, grab right there, there, and that should connect everything. Well, actually, no, we need to do that. Okay, so now we're automatically pushing the uranium ore into here, which will automatically start washing it. And all the things that get put through the thermal centrifuge, or I guess the ore washing plant, goes back into the system. Let's see. Yeah, it's washing this stuff. Yeah, and then we'll take the purified crushed uranium ore. That'll go into here, like so. And then this machine, I think, has to heat up. Yeah, it looks like it's heating up a little bit, and then it's going to do its thing. It's These machines are kind of slow right now because we don't have any of the speed upgrades. That's something we're going to have to look at doing eventually. But anyway, so we can see that these things are being imported back into the system after this goes, right? All right, so after a certain amount of time, this will heat up all the way, and then these will be processed, and those resulting items will get put back into the system. Now, over here, we have a fluid solid canning machine. I don't have any patterns in here. Our metal former on rolling, we have two patterns, one to create iron plates and one to create copper plates. This machine has the ejector upgrade to automatically output to the top side, so the interface will push the ingots in. They'll get processed through, and as soon as they go to the output slot, the machine pushes them back into the interface, which goes back into the system, completing that auto craft. So over here, we have an extruding machine. The only thing we have said here is one iron plate is going to turn into one fuel rod, so we can auto craft all of those things. Well, we should be able to. I haven't tested this yet. But if we tell the system to make a fuel rod, we should be able to craft that up. So that is going to, oh, it already has an iron plate, so it knows how to do that. So if we tell it to make, well, I don't know, 10. Oh, it looks like we have nine iron plates available. So then uh, it's going to take one iron plate, put it through the rolling machine on, all right, yeah, the metal form on rolling, turn it to the plate, and then extrude it. Okay, so it looks like everything should be set up. Let's just tell it to make one fuel rod. Make sure that auto craft is working over here. 
Yeah, so we put the iron plate in here. It's extruding that. It should turn it into the fuel rod and we get kicked back into the interface so we don't even see the output. We should have one over here now. Yeah, okay. So everything looks like that is set up correctly. Cool. All right, so now that we got that done, we're kind of got to wait until we get the uranium 235 and the 238 or 239. I can't remember what that stuff is. So we need those things. We also need to make ourselves a hazmat suit. Yeah, we need this stuff plus the rubber boots and the scuba mask in order to protect ourselves from the radiation damage that those will inflict. So let's go ahead and get this stuff going. So we need orange dye. Uh, poppy. We do have some poppies in here. Mm, that only gets one. Is there a way uses... Is there a way that we can put that through a sag mill and get more? I can't remember. Painting machine sag mill. Looks like we have a chance of getting extras. What about dandelions? We have some of those. So let's put those through. Yeah, let's go ahead and put those through our sag mill out here and we'll make some orange dye and make our hazmat suit. All right, guys. So we are currently using more power than what we are making here. Yeah, we're at negative 66 RF per tick with all these machines over here doing their stuff. Uh, stop exploding. <laughs> So yeah, we're getting our crushed uranium ore and we are processing that through the thermal centrifuge. This is what's taking up a vast majority of the power that we need right now. Uh, so that is doing its thing. I went in and made an oak armor stand from Bibliocraft. I didn't make the vanilla Minecraft one because with this, if you apply a redstone signal, we have a redstone block under here. If you apply a redstone signal, uh, you can shift right click. I think you have to do it with an empty hand. So you can see it has all my dark armor on there. If I shift right click, it switches it all onto me. So yeah, we have the hazmat suit on there now. And now we have our dark armor. So yes, we're protected from this. Unfortunately, I don't know why uh, the textures aren't rendering on this. Hmm. It's hard to tell what's on there. But you can see from the tooltip if you press shift anyway. Uh, so yeah, we are currently wearing the hazmat suit. So we should be okay to come over here and get some of this uranium stuff, right? So there's our 235 and our 238. So we want to take these and convert those into the other stuff to turn into the fuel rod. So the fuel rods show that we need... We go to uses. Um, maybe we need to go to uses for this stuff. Here it is. So enriched uranium nuclear fuel. This is what we need. So uranium 238 plus the tiny pile of 235. So we need to turn that into a auto craft recipe. I still got to figure out where we're going to put our main AE system. <laughs> we have stuff up here. We have stuff down there. there it's kind of all over the place right now. Uh, so let's make a pattern for this. Oh, I'm doing this incorrectly. We need to switch this from processing pattern over to a regular crafting pattern. So there's those guys. So there's the enriched nuclear fuel. So we just need to put this in the system somewhere. And then our system will know how to craft that stuff in the future maybe we'll keep the ic2 stuff separated okay so there is that so now we need to get one of those enriched one of these oh it, the system doesn't know how to craft that because we don't have any in there or it knows how to craft it we just didn't have the, the items so the enriched nuclear fuel we'll craft one of those and then we'll need a fuel rod one of those so we'll set up a pattern here. We'll go back to a processing pattern. We'll see one of those plus one of these is going to equal a completed fuel rod. So let's get back down here and let's make that completed fuel rod so we can place it in the system and it knows what to do. So shift click there, shift click here. So now this is going to go through and do its thing and we should get a completed fuel rod here. And this is going to automatically output to the top side. So that should just be in the system now. So if we go upstairs, we should see our fuel rod. Yep, yep. Okay, fuel rod. Yep, uranium. Cool. All right, so that will end up making this. And we can encode this pattern. So we're going to want to put this into the fluid solid canning machine, machine right like this. So now we should be able to tell the system to craft those and it will make the fuel rod it, or the empty fuel rod. It'll take the 
enrich stuff. It'll make that and combine them together in the canning machine so we can craft those. Uh, the final step is we need to turn those into the quad. The quad fuel rods. Yeah, this thing. So we need three iron plates and two copper plates. So let's see if we can make one of those. Uh, uranium. We're going to do this. All right, so that works. All right, and there's our final pattern. So now we just need to stick that somewhere in here like that. All right, we should be good to go. So we tell the system to make a quad fuel rod. If we have all the uranium... Yeah, it looks like we should be able to do that. All right, so let's tell it to start crafting that. Let's go downstairs. Let's see if everything's going to work correctly. So it looks like our copper is turning into the copper plate. We are extruding out fuel rods. You can see the power is going down. We are definitely not making enough EU power right now through our converter to keep up with everything, but it's enough to get things going. Uh, so there's a fuel rod. There's the enriched uranium nuclear fuel. I don't know how many of these it, it, that it has to do right now. I assume it's going to do more than that. Oh, maybe it's done. All right, let's go check and see if we have a quad fuel rod now. Absolutely, we do. Okay, so we have all of this stuff auto-craftable, which is awesome. So the next step is we need to make ourselves a reactor and all the components that go into that reactor so we can start using that fuel. But I think we're going to have to wait until next time. That's right, guys. We are out of time once again. Oh, my goodness. Getting all this IC2 nuclear stuff going. This is fun. I enjoy doing this. A lot of auto crafting. Uh, we're still kind of early game, I feel like. We don't have automated resources coming in. So a lot of this stuff we're doing by hand. Eventually, we'll get to the point where all of this is automated. And we'll laugh at these times where we had to do all this stuff by hand. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.